，下，下，刚才讲过了，刚才讲了哈，下，下，下，啊，妈，啊，啊，讲坏话，讲坏话，啊，啊，啊。哈喽，这是家暴中心吗？我被打了。Hey, this is Jake. Leave a message. Hello, Xiaoming Xian. I'm pregnant. Call me. I'm being attacked. He's asleep at 12 o'clock. Don't sleep. 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 Don't
，我就不敢回家，然后我就打电话给我 Touch Family Service Center 的 Miss Yan。这是家暴中心吗？我被打了。他就帮我找了一个很 last minute 的一个 woman's home。然后 project start 的 Mr. Mark 就过来我的那个 woman's home. When I first met the client, she was a、uh, it was actually a few days after the a、uh, uh, serious、um, incident of violence, whereby her husband actually punched and、uh, kicked her several times over an argument. Hello, 在哪里？为什么不回来？你有你不出声，我就不知道。快点回来啊！孩子在哪里？在 the point of time, she was still receiving a lot of SMSs and calls from her husband, harassing her, you know, to tell him where where she is and where the children are. The main help that we are trying to provide is is really、um, empowering the victim, you know, to in a sense step out and to say no to violence and you know to empower her to make her own decision to leave the abusive relationship. I'm discussing with her is the application of the personal protection order. The PPO actually is an order which states that the abuser is restrained from using violence towards the victim. When the abuser breaches this PPO, the the victim can report to the police for for this、uh, breach of PPO, and the police、uh, will actually carry out an investigation, and some of the charges can be fined or even jail term as well. Some of her concerns that she shared with me with regards to applying for a personal protection order is that、um, she she is afraid that applying this. Personal protection order or PPO might antagonize her husband, and you know risk the care and safety of the children at home. I'm trying to、um, to encourage her to to see how the PPO can actually act as a deterrence to to abusers, you know, to to not use violence, and also in fact the the PPO is like an added extra protection for herself. 我有跟吴先生讨论过，我想申请保护令，然后他就没有跟我说这么多，他只是在那边静静听而已。我逼他说叫他，呃，跟我离婚。有很多次我都会问他，他还爱我吗？然后我就会听他讲，对，他还爱我，嗯，爱爱，就是很爱我。可是，在我的心里里面。告诉我说，他应该没有什么对我爱，就是没有是没有什么爱意啊、哦。每次我都会告诉我自己，我已经忍不下去啊，因为我已经很辛苦。这里是关怀家暴援助中心。你说他打你，他用什么东西打你？铁锤。那听起来挺严重的。还有呢？新加坡有越来越多人懂得怎么报案。数据方面是说有增加，大家比较明白什么是家暴，什么是虐待残疾人士。我们在二零零九年成立，主要的服务对象是受到嗯、呃、家暴问题的家庭。现在只是你一个。我们是星期一至五十点到五点开放，在任何的一个情况下，我们会有五到十个员工可以接听这个热线。在最忙碌的时候，我们一天可能接到数十通电话。以家庭关系来区分，差不多一半的个案是配偶之间的暴力，其他的差不多二十八千是在年长人士，剩余的差不多二十多八千的受害者是儿童、残疾人士或者其他关系的家庭成员。根据我们的经验，一个人在家中被打还是被侮辱的时候。
他们会拖一点时间再抱。通常是因为家人的关系，不希望感情破裂，所以当他们来抱的时候，可能是五年后、十年后，甚至是三十几年后。除了热线服务之外，我们也可以为受害者申请人身保护令。Hello， 嗨。关怀家族奥援助中心吗？他又打我了，我真的受不了了。如果需要的话，我们也可以进行危机处理。就是说，如果呃、嗯、一个人被困在家里，受到生命上的危险，需要我们马上下去支援的话，我们也可以下去。Okay, we will also call in the ambulance. Don't worry, just stay with me on the phone. My colleague will go to your place. 曾经有一次，在一个月内，那个案主进了医院两次，都是因为家暴的问题。可是因为孩子，因为金钱，因为还很爱丈夫，她不愿意离开。当天，她传了一个简讯，告诉我们她被打了。之后，我们试着打给她，传简讯给她，她没回应我们。我们就想，可能。在一个小时内，他没有回应我们，我们就叫警方下去看一下到底需要什么援助。在三十分钟后，他打回来给我们，说他愿意离开，因为又刚刚被打了，而且先生跟他说，这只是两成功力，之后他会受到更严重的家暴，所以我们就几个人下去，嗯、呃，叫了警方，呃，到了那个家，有没有人在家？先生刚刚离开，在他给予允许的情况下，开门，带他出来，把他带到一个安全的地方。其实家暴不止发生在家中，情侣之间的暴力也是我们常见的。有些人觉得情侣之间的暴力只会发生在年轻人的身上，其实这个情侣之间的暴力出现在各个的年龄层。当然，在青少年十几二十岁的时候，是我们最常见的。怎么办？怎么办？ I met him first when I was seventeen. We were in the same college, and we were schoolmates. 
We really don't know that he's abusive. We just know that she she's not herself. No, she will lie. She will not be home. She's not my Nicole anymore. But I say, it's part of growing up. I also have to go with the flow. But um, I can tell you, we really, really gave her all. Uh, we, we we believed her. We we want to give her the benefit of doubt. Until one day, we found the letter from the police. It says that we are investigating your case. We waited for her to come home, and all the truth came out. So, um, it pained me. I remember feeling really um, helpless. I saw domestic violence hotlines, but I didn't really relate it to dating violence. So, I was just, no, let's just stay away from there. When the situation comes to 通常身边的人都会跟受害者说：“哦，别傻了，离开算了。”当他们重复性的听到这段话的时候，他们可能认为，当他们寻求援助的时候，社工们也会告诉他们分手算了。所以，为了保护这段关系，他们可能就会觉得不希望出来寻求援助。And then by the time you're really deep into it, it's so hard to pull out. And he, like, from physical abuse, he started, you know, like threatening, like meaning using whatever he can to just keep me with him. So if in school he can threaten to make a scene outside my classroom, like you know, to embarrass me. If to my parents, he will call the house at 3 a.m. He said, "I'm going to wake your whole family up." He went to my parents. I was outside, and then he. Um, sent a text to my friend and said, um, "Good luck at home." So I, I straight away I called my mom, and I was like, "Mom, what happened?" She was like, "What do you think happened?" And I knew that he must have said something to them and really hurt them. So my whole night was ruined. I really pray very hard. I pray that this nightmare will be over. But with every day telling her, you know, you must be careful. I really cannot change the past. I I just hope it would go away and move on from there. I cried and I thought, you know, maybe my parents would be better off without a daughter who brings such shame to them. And um, yeah, so what I did was I. Took some pills, random pills. I didn't even know I took, you know, colorful pills, and I just took them. And I thought that, you know, be, um, I just went to sleep after that. And then, like in a few hours, I woke up with a really, really bad stomach. I felt really bad. I was like, oh, is this it? I thought, is this it? I went to the toilet and then. I really puked, and it was the worst, the worst puke I've ever had. It was so painful. I remember. After my whole suicide phase, I knew that I needed help. Aware had this We Can campaign, which was to against abuse. And it was ending violence against women, so that like caught my attention. You know, I decided to attend one of their workshops to see, you know, how they can help. So I did. I attended their workshop and I told my story. After I think a month, like one of them contacted me and said, "Hey, we have we have an event about on, on the abuse. Do you wanna talk at it? Like share your experience. You know, motivate people." So what I just wanna say is that women. Just because you're women, right, doesn't mean you're the weaker sex. And you,、uh, and the key to your decisions and your dignity is always in yourself. In all her aware participation, we were always there. We eat at the speakers' corner. We bring mats, and then we listen. And every time, each time she talks, I will cry. Don't tell me why, but I just felt overwhelmed. She's so strong to stand there and share. From how aware has you know helped me bring my story out, I thought I could convert it into something better. So I started a campaign. It's called Love Us. I got a booth space in the biggest in the main faculty, and then yeah, I just helped my campaign. I raised awareness. I made badges for people to wear. 
In my campaign, there's a website, lavas.tk. It's, a, it's a website where you can actually, there's signs for friends of victims, and there's what victims can do. There are helplines, and one of them, of course, is aware. But I'm glad that she's been picking herself up now, having more friends. I really support the thing that she did in NUS. I call all my friends in NUS, hey, my daughter got a booth, you go here against dating violence, went to Malaysia, get the badges, I'll, I'll give my all. Hey, all that badges, I have to call people, hey, you in Johor, I have staff who's Malaysian, hey, this weekend you go home or not, you go here and fetch for me this thing. So a lot of, all you do is order, mommy will, you know, I'm all out for her. There's one thing I always mention in my speeches and everything is that these ladies have to know their worth. Well, not only ladies, ladies and men, you know, even men get abused. Whatever consequences that you have to go through, I don't think it's as big a risk to take as to, you know, continue dating that person. It might be even worse. So just take that risk, take that leap of faith and things will turn out better like how it did for me.